Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona and I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. Oh, look at that. Well, you haven't trained biceps in almost a year. Triceps, hold on. They're, my triceps are better to be honest. Uh, maybe the wrong angle, hold on, I'll try this side. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Shoulders. Anyway, as you can tell, I lift. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about that today. Sorry, I just got, just I just got uh, taken away in the moment there, admiring my gains, which I shouldn't be getting. I should be having upper body gains because I don't train my upper body. I train it once a week. Don't train my arms, don't train my chest, don't train my back or my shoulders heavy. But alas, here we are. Regardless, today we're gonna look at some Tommy Lemon. Apparently, she's gonna start eating more protein and she's gonna start exercising. So I, I know that she watches me sometimes, so this is absolutely music to my ears. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of curious to see what, what her plan is, to be honest. But if you're curious in coaching, either approaching an eight week training and nutrition plan or to inquire about one-to-one -one coaching and my availability, my email is in the description down below. Also go check out my vlog channel where I show you my life, eating, training, what I'm going up to. All kinds of stuff, recipes sometimes, but it's a bit of everything, to be honest. So, like when I'm dieting, when I'm not dieting, what my body is looking like, I'm very transparent and honest with what I'm doing. And if you're curious to see about the Sweden travels, obviously go over there as well. So, let me move over. And, uh, let's see what she has to say, shall we? Hello Lem fam, so I am making some breakfast over here. This is just some uh, full fat quark and this whole bowl it contains like, what was it again? Um, let's see, 118 calories for 100 grams. This is 500 grams, so 118 times 5, which is like... So, what you would be better off is getting the huir or the total, faye total, or even like whatever, whatever brand, Shobani, I think they have in the US, get the high protein, low fat, low carb yogurt so those usually speaking you're looking at like two or three grams of carbs zero fats and 10 or 10 to 11 grams of protein per 100 grams that will be a lot more beneficial especially with all the fruits that she's eating here as well it's like a lot of carbs basically and quite a lot of fat as well which doesn't matter too much if you're calorie counting but if you're trying to increase your protein definitely go for the high fat protein and honestly it tastes the same it's really creamy, it's, it's delicious. I love high fat protein. I don't eat it a lot. Uh, I just don't try to minimize my dairy. But uh, I do, I do, I love, I love dairy though. But high fat protein is very good. Or quark, quark, you can have that too. Really high in protein too. So yeah. 590 calories, I think. So I'm not going to add any carbs with it because that's pretty high, like as is, it's good. So I'm just going to add some fruit. It's canned or it was canned, but I don't care about that too much. At least not at it. Fruits are carbs though. I, I know what people say, like healthy or like an actual carb sauce, but the fruit is fruit is an actual carb sauce. <laughs> moment. So let's leave this for tomorrow and then I have some fruit for right now. Let's also add a little bit of the juice that was in there because this pork does not have too much flavor of its own. That goes back into my empty fridge. Right. Another good trick is to make sure um, yogurt. What I used to like to do, I still like to do actually, is um, what I like to do is mix my yogurt or my pork or whatever it is with some protein powder get more protein in there and you give it flavor too, which is a great little hack. My fridge is still pretty empty, but I am having like a big, big grocery haul tomorrow. Also, I still have two cookies from uh, making the gingerbread houses. They lived through my last binge, uh, but they're still there. So apart from fruit and some of the fruit juice, this has not much flavor. And so I'm also adding some water enhancer. This is just some zero sugar water enhancer. I'm just going to add some and that will be my breakfast. That might not look very appetizing, but let me stir it through and it's, it's, it's pretty good. Something that I also really want to start doing, and I will talk about this like in a minute, is to start count my proteins. So in this is eight points. We love this. Oh, this is actually not too bad in protein. Eight grams of protein is not too bad. It's just high in fats. So, if you're trying to um, minimize your calorie intake, then just go for the lower fat intake, uh, for lower fat content, I should say. But this is good. One grams of protein, so 8.1 times five. So that means in my breakfast, there is 40.5 grams of protein, which is pretty good. Good morning, Lamfem. So I just wanted to go through a few changes with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm super positive for some reason. I have no idea why. I have been on, on like a positive streak for like yesterday and then today. And I am just like, okay. Let's... 
It's, it's, I don't mean to laugh, it just sounds really funny how she's like, I've been in a good mood for two days, yay me! <laughs> Which, like, it is like that. If you're in a phase of just uh, depression and you feel crap all the time and, you know, life just sucks, to have two days of being happy, it's great. <laughs> it just, it, it's just, it just made me chuckle because, like, I know I've been there myself, like, I'm sure everybody has to some degree, so it's just funny when she's like, yeah, I've been happy for two days, for me! <laughs> Let's, let's just go with it. I wanted to make some changes anyways, and I was like, yeah, it's Monday, February 6th, and I was like, yeah, just, you know, let's get to it. My new goals for February, and it's a little bit late because, like I said, it's the 6th today. Better late than never. Like, I don't like to stick to, like, okay, I'm going to begin next Monday, or I'm going to begin next month, or January 1st, when you're able to just make the change, right? 100% I agree. I don't believe in this. Oh, yeah, I've got to wait until this day. Just if you want to really change, you just start now or tomorrow, but you don't have to wait until New Year or Monday or... By the way, who set New Year's resolutions has managed to stick to them so far? I didn't do any really, so I don't really believe in them. But yeah, let me know if you did any New Year's resolutions and how they're going for you. My new goals for like the, the coming month or months or weeks, I don't know how long I want this to be before increasing it or changing it up again. One of them is simple, the other one not so much, at least not for me at this moment, but we'll just put in some more effort and just do it. So I am very focused on calories and I try to not be too focused on calories. Like I know how to lose weight and even without counting calories, like I have an idea of what's in what meal, give or take. I, I know how to lose weight without counting every calorie. However, how much I try to not count calories, it's such an automatic process that I am just like, how am I going to change that? And instead of just trying to change it, because I have been trying to change it, and like I said, it's just such an automatic process, I'm going to start with something different. I am going to keep track, and not really to keep track, I'm not going to write it down, I'm not going to log it or whatever, but just to educate myself a little bit more about proteins. I'm going to start to count the amount, like the grams of proteins that are in a single meal. And I think that's a good idea. Ideally, she should be aiming for around 20 to 40 grams of protein in a meal. There's some science out there that suggests that over 30 grams of protein your body doesn't assimilate it. I think that also, I think that's like on average for an average person, I think your lean mass and your your how uh, how much how fast your metabolism is and how much you work out, I think all of that matters too. But in general, she should aim to go for around 30 grams of in general, she should aim for around 30 grams of protein. It's not like, it's not that I am going to change my diet. That's, that's another step. First of all, I just want to have some insight and some overview of like how much protein do I eat at this moment. A lot of you have told me to eat more proteins. Shigara Transformations also urged me to eat more proteins. I'm just starting to eat <laughs> proteins. It may sound pretty easy for some of you. I am not used to paying attention to the amount of proteins that are in my food. And I was like, you know, let's just keep track of the amount of proteins that I eat with every meal or for every meal. That the thing is as well, it's like when you, if you're used to eating the way she does, which is like, I actually do have this with a lot of my clients as well. Like her diet is actually not that unusual. A lot of people eat like this. Um, and when they start incorporating a lot more protein, they do feel a lot more satiated and they do lose a lot more weight. It's, it seems it's, and it's one of those things that it's the same as drinking water, drinking a lot of water. A lot of people drink maybe a liter a day, maybe two. Really, you should aim like for at least four or five liters a day. Like, Three, two, three bare minimum, four if you're working out, may, and you do a lot of you are very active, you want to have like maybe four to five liters a day minimum. So in the beginning to try and drink that much, it is difficult because you're not used to it. But once you get into a habit of drinking a lot of water or eating a lot of protein, you get thirsty a lot and you will always want to drink water because you're used to that. Same as with protein. If I don't eat enough protein a day and I eat a lot, I eat between 200 to 250 grams a day. I eat a lot of protein. I'm, I'm, I'm a big girl too, you know, I'm not a petite little thin female, I'm a pretty big bitch, as they say. But besides that point, if I don't get enough protein, I notice it. I don't really notice the carbs, sometimes I notice with my fats, I just sometimes notice with my carbs, it depends. But with the protein, guaranteed, if I'm low on my protein for that day, I feel it. If I've only had like 100, 150 grams in a day and it's later in the day, I crave the protein and I feel like it's missing from my body. Like, uh... It's just, but it's one of the things you just have to get used to eating. And once you're doing it, it's fine. And it's just, you have to just start prioritizing it. Like, you know, when you're uh, out and about, if you want to have a snack, um, rather like, for example, I'm going to fly today. This is actually filming on the day that I'm flying. And I don't want to take like meals with me and Tupperware in the airplane. I could, I can't be bothered. So instead, what I went to, I went to the deli section of the supermarket and I just looked at their uh, sandwich, the, 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 the beslag. The sandwich, the sandwich meats, right? And I just went for like a chicken breast. So I got 200 grams of sliced chicken breast. 
Um, it's not breast, like it's still like processed a little bit. It's not actual breast meat. It's kind of like leaner cut deli meat. Um, like it's come, it's come from a sausage shape. So it's not an actual breast meat. They, I couldn't see that. I would have bought that if I could. They do that in the UK. They don't do that over here. But I, I just went into Lidl and uh, basically I got some like chicken breast for the sandwich. I think it's turkey actually. But point being is, is that I was able to get um, some some protein which is going to be like around 20 grams per 100 gram it's going to be lower in carbs it's going to be lower in fat than other proteins it's not going to be as lean as a chicken breast but i'm going to have that and i'm going to slice myself up some carrots and cucumbers just to nibble on so and i also have like a protein bar uh, or just to have just in case you know i'm not flying for that long so it should be fine but i don't know how you never know you never know right this is what I mean. It's like there is, you can make options. If you go out for a meal in a restaurant, just make sure that you're not ordering just garlic bread or just pasta. Like make sure you order something maybe that has protein in it. And then if you still want to have the other things with it, order that too. But you just have to make a priority of, of eating protein basically. And it's kind of, it's not so hard when you, when you do it, it's just doing it. The way I do get an insight and I can educate myself. Okay, so this is an item there is like much protein in this or okay I thought there would be a lot of protein in this product, but there really isn't so I'm not going to change up my diet yet But I am going to just keep track of every amount like every gram of protein That's in my meal so that I can teach myself what's food that's high in protein because of course I, I do know it a little bit like I know like chicken and milk based products and uh, Certain types of beans and nuts and seeds But I have no like I cannot really make an estimation of the amount of grams that's in there and the advised amount of grams That you should eat as a person like that's that kind of stuff. I do not really know about it I, I know what proteins do with the body. I know how they work inside your body why they are important that you get satiated from them i don't really I, I am a big person yeah i'm a big person no but i'm big on numbers and i don't really know much about like the amount that you need the amount that's in food like in terms of grams so i'm excited about learning about that and after having learned about it then maybe i can make a change into eating a little bit more protein to see what it does with my body and with my mental health also in the end little pet break so ooh, here is yuki and i'm trying to show them your leg okay you can see pretty good he is healing up and he does have like a little scar from his surgery but he's doing pretty good i'm sorry he does not want to be held right now my uh my cat's over at my friends at the moment and she, she's loving it she's adapting really well obviously she is uh only down till i'm gone violet violet is only down till i'm back the dogs had to go to a hotel unfortunately but uh i'm happy that i could stick violet with a friend instead of uh having to take her to a hotel as well not necessarily from a cost perspective but i think it's just better for cats like dogs are a bit more adaptable aren't they in different places whereas cats don't like it at all to be removed from their home so being around people that are going to play in cuddle room, I think is much better for her. He only wants to lick this bowl of like my breakfast and he's not going to because I like I know diary is not good for cats. So let me just take this to the kitchen and then I'll go into the second big change. The second big change that I'm going to make. I have lost 50 pounds so far. I have lost that weight without any like excessive or excessive, not any like movement goal. I didn't want to make things too hard for myself. And so I focused primarily on my food intake. I'm just making sure that my, like the amount that I eat is less than the amount that I burn. And since I am a big person, I also do lose a lot of like calories just from breathing and making my body work. And so I was able to lose like 50, 50. This, this is true. Like the bigger you are, the higher your maintenance calories are or your TDE calories or however you want to call it. So. Yeah, she doesn't have to do an awful lot uh, to burn more calories, which is why big people, which is like, this is also what I don't understand. If you ever go to a coach, if you're a big person and you ever get somebody to get you, give you a training plan, unless you specify that you want to be really extreme, if, you, if you're like over basically like two, three hundred pounds, if somebody puts you on a diet of like twelve hundred calories, they're, they're talking crap because like when you're a big person, you can eat a lot. So... Why would you want to starve somebody knowing full well that they're more likely they're not going to fail? Like, I know for weight loss surgery is different. I don't talk about, like, medical reasons. I just talk in general. If you're a big person looking to be coached, then if you hire somebody and they just put you basically on, like, a really enormous deficit, there, there's no need for it. It really isn't. Like, I have lots of people. Uh, I have lots of mostly women because I coach mostly women. But most people that are with me, they eat a lot of food and still lose weight. Yeah, granted, they're not losing like five to ten pounds a week. But again, that's not the goal. The goal is partially instilling healthy habits and not feeling the need to binge. And like, this is where progress comes from. And like, and binging comes from over restricting. You don't need to eat 1200 calories to lose weight. Yeah, of course, you're going to lose weight. Sorry, I've got like little cat hairs on my face and it's bothering me. Uh, like you, yeah, you're gonna lose weight. Everybody's gonna, pretty much everybody's gonna lose weight on those kind of calories. But why, why eat 1,200 if you can eat 2,200 or 2,500? If you can eat more, isn't that better? Like to me, it is. I'd rather eat more than eat less. But there you go. 
50 pounds in half a year, that's, that's a pretty good amount. It's just slow but steady. And it's not super slow even, it's just, it's okay. It's the amount that I like to lose. Like, I don't want to lose too fast because I know, like, I, I really want to not only lose weight, it's about changing my lifestyle to, like, something that's sustainable and just bettering my life in general. There are so much things that I haven't experienced and my weight is a big part of that. My weight and the way that I was brought up, they, like, those things together, they are still holding me in their grip every single day. And I just want to break free from that. I want to start living. And I'm not trying to reach, like, a certain weight before wanting to break free and live. That's a wrong mindset to have. Like, if you are waiting for the perfect moment, you can wait, like, forever. That's not going to happen. But as I lose... Yeah, she's, yeah, she's right. There's no such thing as a perfect moment. You've got to do the things because you want to do the things. And, like, if you don't start now, it's never going to happen, is it? So... Yeah, 100% correct. I start noticing that things are getting easier again, that I am having more days where I don't feel as depressed. The first time that I felt depressed was when I was six. And then, like, I got bigger and bigger. And in the end, I think that my depression is not so much caused by my environment because I live on my own. I do have a great house and I have my cats. I do have a lot of things to be grateful for. And being obese, like morbidly obese, is a really, really big reason of me sustaining that depression because there are so much things that I cannot do or that are too hard for me to do or that seem so out of reach for me to do. A big part comes out of being obese and not feeling motivated to really live. But I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really, like, fired up. So, so it becomes it becomes, it becomes like a cycle then, doesn't it? It's like you're obese, which makes you not want to do certain things. And because you're not doing certain things, you feel bad about yourself, which then makes you more depressed, which then drives you to eat more, to then you still can't do the things. And it's just, you have to break that cycle. Part of that is doing the things. Part of that is doing, uh, like going out and do things that maybe you don't think you can, or that you feel like might challenge you, which you, do, you don't have to go to the extreme. You can start small, obviously, but you still have to, you always have to just break the cycle and kind of get outside of your comfort zone. And that's a lot easier said than done when you're in a depression, like a lot easier said than done, but that's, that, that is basically what you have to do though, you know? And I know it's very easy for me to say, and like, trust me, I have been depressed, but I've always been a very functional, high functioning person with depression. And when I had my mental illness, uh, like, I don't know, I've just been like, it's just been a part of me, but it doesn't, I've, I've never, um, and everybody's different, obviously. I, I fully understand that it all comes in different levels. It's just that he's still got to do the things and start, try to stay productive. And, you know, sitting around and not doing anything, expecting things to happen or change. Like, I was thinking about doing that reaction to Pete and uh, his rant about just how freaking entitled he is about having to go to work. And, like, but I, I know if I, I would be matty if I did that. And like, that's not, that's just not, you can't get matty as a reaction channel. It's not a good look. But the reality is, it's like, we're all within reason. We are in control of our surroundings. And like, if you can't control it, to try to get too upset about it, it's, it's not pointless because obviously we get upset about things, but you, you just can't, you can only control what you can control. And to worry about things that may or may not happen, it's, I mean, I know it's, we all do it, obviously, but when you think about it, it doesn't make sense. And I, I, I know we all do that, and I know we all know that, but the reality is, is that sometimes when you have thoughts like that, you just have to push it to the side and go like, well, I'm still going to do this because I have this goal that I want to reach. Like, I do want to get healthier. I do want to get better. I want to get more mobile. I want to fit in these clothes. I want to feel more confident in summer wearing certain things. Um, I want to be able to have children. I want to be able to go on these hikes. I want to be able to be there for my children better, wh wherever it may be, you know? Day. So the other change that I wanted to make is to start to incorporate more movement. How I want to do that? I have thought about a step goal. I don't want to do a step goal. I am obsessed with numbers and I know that when I am focusing on a step goal, that can go very wrong. And I'm not saying that I'm never going to do it, but for now, I just want to ease into it. I don't want to get too overwhelmed and I'm not going to count my steps. Instead of that, I'm just going for a time frame that I want to be outside to walk for. I want to walk at least five times a week for half an hour. And this might not seem too much, but it's... A this is a starting point, and especially because it's not a step goal. I mean, obviously, she could definitely benefit from a lot more movement. I'm not going to say that, but I understand where she's coming from. They do recommend, even just for general heart health, half an hour of cardio a day is essential. I usually recommend all of my clients to do half an hour of cardio a day, just because it is good for your heart health. Like, it's, it's an underrated muscle. When people say, like, oh, cardio makes you lose your gains, that's bullshit. It, it means you can eat more and also it means you can train better if you've got good cardiovascular health you recover quicker between sets and you can push more because you can take in more breath you can take in more oxygen so cardio is always recommended and i think just starting with something like half an hour a day that's doable and honestly i find um because i obviously walk my dogs a lot i do find those breaks that i get away from my desk where i'm this is where i'm blessed i like in a way that i can do the work that i'm doing where i'm just sitting here and i'm at home all the time 
it can be isolating but at the same time it's very nice because i don't if i need to go out and do something i can but part of that is like i have the ability to walk my dogs four times a day and they usually get two big walks so like the biggest one in the morning is for an hour and in the afternoon i take them for half an hour to 45 minutes and then twice a day they get a walk of like 10 to 20 minutes depending on like how my day is doing and how busy i am and how tired they are and weather etc but my point being is, is like I like the if I, I like it when I have the time to take them for the bigger afternoon walk because it's like three o'clock in the afternoon, the weather is nice, it's getting warmer in the day, um, and it's just nice to be able to get away from my desk after having walked after having worked so long to just unwind, listen to some live stream, and just go for a walk for forty five minutes to a half an hour to forty five minutes, and it really does. Uh, re-energize you and I've, I would recommend this for many people if you especially if you're desk bound and you're sitting on a computer all day long if you can and like I know people have different working environments but if you can maybe every few hours just go up for 10 minutes 20 minutes or even at lunch just go for a walk for half an hour especially outside get some fresh air get some vitamin D it, it does wonders like it really does wonders for your energy but obviously it's good for your mental health uh, yeah, it's good for your immune system if you go outside, so highly recommend. Good. Like for me, I feel as if this is a good place for me to start. I'm not going to make this a challenge or whatever, so I'm trying to not to pressure myself into it too much, but I am more of like, if I want to do something, just fucking do it. You know, just, just do it. And so I am just going to be open about it if I have trouble doing it. I'm so sorry. I have, I've been a little bit under the weather, and I never got a full on cold. The only thing I have is like, I have an incredibly runny nose, to a point where sometimes if I've leaned forward, like it just drips out. So... Sorry about that. I, I try and catch it, obviously, and sniff it up, but no, that one just slipped out of there by accident. I didn't feel it. If I get too obsessed with it, for now, this is what I want to do. And not only, like, it's not so much even to lose weight, it's, it's more of, like, I want to feel fit and I want to get out of the house more. Like, I had a binge, like, last week, and I have been inside for 12 days now, 11, 12 days. I am just sick of it. Like, come on. It's almost spring and then it's summer. I just want to... Oof, oof, that's crazy. I can't imagine being indoors that long, though. I would get uh, claustrophobia. No, claustrophobia is another name for it. I mean, it is claustrophobic where you're in a space, but I would get, there's a name for it if you're it's caught in a, in, a, in a space all the time. Yeah, I couldn't do that. They're like, I am a loner, that's okay, but like sitting inside all day, it's just, it's not good for your mental health. So I am not no. going to ramble about that too much because I have an appointment at 2 p.m. and it is almost 1 p.m. and I do want to get that half hour of walking in because I want to start that today. Let's just be open about it, let's talk about it. I have this app, like I have my wristband and there you can see the steps, but like I said, I'm not going to focus on the steps, but let's just see in, in let's say two weeks. Let's, let's do this for two weeks and let's see how my activity levels go up and then we I'm kind of curious to see how many steps she does a day on average. She must be, be better. If she doesn't leave the house, she probably does like 1,500 to 2,000, I guess. Unless she's making a concerted effort to go for a walk. That's crazy to me. When people get some little steps. It really, like, I just, I, I, I just can't get around it. Obviously, like, I have dogs, so it's very different for me. But I've, I've always done the cardio. Like, I've always had cardio. If Even if I'm walking my dogs, I have to also go to the gym to do my cardio. I just like doing cardio in the morning. I don't know what it is. It just makes me feel good. It sets me up. And now I've kind of got into the habit of being more in my comment section. So like technically I'm working, but I'm doing my cardio. Got my drum and bass going. See the sunrise over the mountains. Get my I'm on the Stairmaster or I'm incline walking. If you incline walk, I've said this many times. If you incline walk, do not hold on to the machine, please. It defeats the whole point of the incline. Go as high as you can um, at a certain pace that you want to go. Or just go on the highest incline and just walk. Use your glutes, use your calves, build those muscles. Um, besides that point, I just like I just like that morning routine of doing cardio in the morning. I don't know what it is. It just it just makes me feel good. It really does. And if you're somebody that does that fasted cardio, you know exactly what I mean. It just it just sets you up nicely for the day. We can see like how many steps I I get in in half an hour. Yeah, let's just go from there. Yeah, I can say a lot of things, but let's just go. By the way, look at this cutie right here. He's on my background decor. And then over here, we have Pisash on his guest tower. By the way, I also decided these are two items that are like past their expiry date for like 10 months at least. This one is more than a year over date. Just in the bigger <laughs> picture of like, love yourself, don't treat yourself as a trash bag, you know? You're, you're worth more than that. So I'm going to just get rid of them. However, I really do want to eat those. Puffages are delicious though, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, if I'm gonna go see my dad, I might have some. They, I think they did them in Belgium as well, puffages. So I might have to have some. <clears throat> Definitely gonna have some chips from chips while I'm there. Oh, in Sweden, I'm not so bothered. None of the food is amazing there. I'll probably get some pick and mix. I do like some pick and mix, but yeah, puffages. Mm. Not eating those for a while, like at least homemade. I haven't had them for like ever. And so I was like, why just don't like just throw these away and buy some new ones then? Like, come on, you can do this. I'm going to throw this away and tomorrow there will be a big grocery haul. This will be part of it, but that will be a new one because like I said, this one is very, very much expired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. I, <laughs> I know it's 
like a running joke on this channel, but why is it that people always film their feet when they're walking? It's strange, huh? I'm trying to think if I've done it. I might have done it here or there, but I never. Oh. I, don't, I never really do it on. But like, I don't. I don't think I've really. Uh, do I? I don't think so. I think I just do this when I'm walking. Yeah. <laughs> Caucus. I look like Bulgaria, Bulgaria then. then. <laughs> that looks, looks so, so like Holland. Like For lunch, I'm going to eat three slices of bread. These are all the ingredients. If you're interested, you can just pause the screen. For every 100 grams of bread, there is 10 grams of proteins. I'm having three slices, I think. It's like 35 grams a piece, but let's just wait out and then we know for like the future. So that's my scale, three slices of bread. Oh wow, that's exactly like 100 grams. So that's like 33 grams per piece. That's really easy. That's, that's a lot of protein in the bread. It's a normal for a slice of bread. It could be that this is protein bread though. They do do that in Holland. So maybe this is protein bread. Easy to calculate. So there's 10 grams of protein in here as is. And of course I'm adding some butter, like some uh, low fat margarine. I'm going to turn this thing on and it says zero grams right now so let's measure out some better normally i don't really measure it out i just scoop some out and i just spread it onto my bread i'm sorry for like the wiggling you're just hanging on my chest so that's 22 grams of low fat margarine these are like the nutrition facts for it mostly it consists out of fats and of those fats most of them are healthy fats spreading every piece of bread with butter i i don't know it's just a normal thing over here there are a lot of uh... <laughs> bread and butter is nice though especially if it's like fresh bread like crusty bread oh. and when you get like the real butter the, like sort of the french butter with the salt crystals Vitamins in here, and I don't know. We've just been taught, and I do it, and I like it. It makes the bread, I don't know, more good. I also looked up the amount of proteins, but there's not much in it, so let's just forget about the proteins in this butter. I'm going to slice up some cheese for topping my bread, at least two of them. I like to just make a cheese sandwich with cheese and some veggies. That's great, I forgot to turn this thing on. Let's take off like the cheese, let's turn it on, let's go turn it on, and let's weigh it out. 36 grams of cheese, there is no like nutrition information on the packet, but I will search it on. Yeah, cheese, uh, it depends on what kind of cheese, it, the protein in it. 8.9 grams of protein. For 36 grams. Oh yeah, I was going to say like 100 grams is usually around 30 grams of protein, I think. Is it? Yeah. But it's got high fat as well, obviously. Line and I will insert this here. I'm going to top it with some like cute little tomatoes. I also have some pretty dead looking arugula, but that's that's fine. It's still good, I hope. And that's it for my first sandwich. The other one I'm going to top that with some peanut butter. If you want to pause the screen again, you can, but I will also put it on the screen. This one's almost empty. However, I do have another one right there. The best one is calve. The peanut butter just tastes different. Like, if you've had it, Calvé Pinder Cars, it just tastes different from normal peanut butters. Let's make some lunch. So the scale is on zero again. I just emptied out my one pot. I'm just going to smear that on there. So that's six grams. However, I like to have some more, so I'm going to also open the other pot and uh, spread it on here. So, so a serving of peanut butter is around 15 grams, normally speaking. Do that. So this is how much I want. Let's put this back on top. In terms of grams, this is 13 grams of spread, like peanut butter spread. Then I like to fold this thing. Let's do that. Hey, don't fight cuties. So yeah, this thing I fold it in half. This thing I'm going to cut it and that will be it for my lunch. So this is what it looks like. So if she wanted to up her protein a bit on this, what she could do is literally, like I was saying about the deli chicken, just add some jelly chicken to that cheese sandwich. It'd be really nice. Like it would be amazing. And she could bump it up to maybe like 30 grams. So that's just a suggestion, but it's not so bad. Like this is my like cheese sandwich. And of course I also have my peanut butter sandwich. I will put the amount of proteins on the screen. <laughs> hello, oh hello. Oh my God, seriously? I'm not going to help you, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> I'm not going to help you, I'm sorry, but that's that's like trial and error, but you're fine. That was so cute though. By the way, he has been playing with my potatoes, as you can see. There's all that stuff on top of my fridge, like ugh. You really want to go up there, yeah? You'll have to learn to do it yourself, okay? I think he will figure this out in like, I don't know, five minutes probably. And he constantly sees my other cats sitting up there and he's like, oh my god, I want to. Bon appetit, et smaglik. So I'm rarely showing this, but of course I'm also going to drink a lot of water with my meal. It has been some time. I had an appointment with my social worker, I did some walking, I went over to my sister to get myself. I have this thing, which measure measures measures all kinds of stuff it's measuring my heart rate right now so it thinks i'm dead but this thing is made of like silicon i think and as you can see if it wants to focus at least like there is this uh how do you call that there's this there and then also this little thing it's yeah it's it's just dead when i had fitbit i don't know if it's a fitbit or not but what i, what I had one of those i was forever breaking bounds on them it has broken so let's just break it they really want some food are you hungry yeah i know come on i will feed you almost i don't know why but i just want to break it so that's i have a reason to really throw it away this time i'm going to take out my little device i'm going to throw this in the trash and yeah let's just put this thing into its new bend my sister and i both bought these packets with like a green one and a black one and she really liked the black one i really like the green one so we are just swapping those colors so that i have two of the like the green ones oh my god i'm so happy that i have bought some scissors for like the studio 
office area. Let's put this thing in. I want it the right side up. Like you can just put it in however you like, but I have, yeah, I like it the other way. So I have a brand new thing again. I will put this on, really happy with it. And that will last me for like half a year, I hope, maybe longer, hopefully longer. So I did half an hour of walking and I think I was a little bit over enthusiastic. I want to continue with half an hour. However, my body did not really like it. I got some pain in my spine, no, spleen, the, how you call that? She got a stitch, I think is what she means. Yeah, she's got a stitch. I think it's your spleen. Just that thing in, inside like your middle, the middle of your stomach that starts to hurt. I don't really have a problem with that. It's just a little pain. You can just push through it. But then also my legs really started to burn and not from uh, muscle pains because like, again, that's just pain. I don't care about that. They started to burn and really got really, really itchy. And I have had that before. And as you might know, I so, so like, like allergy. allergy? I also have skin picking disorder, dermatillomania it's called, or exflor, I don't know, another weird word. I have had this before. I did not walk a lot. I went for a big walk, started to scratch, and my whole legs, I just ruined them. There are still a lot of scars from like, this is like one and a half year, maybe two years ago, I don't exactly know. So I'm like, do I just push through this? Or is this maybe a sign that my body says, just pick it up, like do maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes for a week. And then after that week, we can go to 30 minutes. I'm not really sure. I'm going to- I wonder oh. if she needs to consider maybe wearing or whatever she's wearing. I didn't see what she was wearing, but maybe when she goes for a walk, she should put on, uh, she could consider putting on something like some tracksuits or maybe some leggings that are in like a, a better material. Cause I'm guessing it's the material maybe that she was having a reaction for. Unless it's like completely mental, I don't think it is. I think she probably um, had a reaction, but it could just be from the outfit that she was wearing. Cause obviously when you're exercising, you need to wear exercise clothes. Uh, you don't have to, but it's, you know, gym clothes are gym clothes for a reason. <laughs> to think on it a little bit longer. I, I think the right thing to do is go to 15 minutes, but I'm, I'm just motivated. I want to go, um, but this is my downfall. I want to go too fast, get overwhelmed, and then I just break down and, and stop it altogether. I also talked this over with my social worker, um, but I, I went for a walk. I'm going to make some dinner right now. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's throw away all the food, the expired foods, and also the little bracelet. Let's throw it away right now. Also, let's feed my cats because if I don't, they will eat me, probably. Oh my God, that's hard with one hand. Let's give them some water. Bon appetit, cuties. Don't you want to eat, cutie? Come on. No? <laughs> you will. Right here, I have a little bit over 500 grams of potatoes. I'm going to rinse them and I'm going to cut them up. After that, I'm going to boil them. I'm going to eat this with this sauerkraut and I'm also going to cook myself some meat to go with it. And also some gravy. I have my potatoes. I love sauerkraut. It's very nice with mustard and steak. And it's um, good for your digestion as well. Good for stomach acids and all of that. Sauerkraut. Kraut. There, I also have my gravy. It's just some butter. You have to melt it. After that, you have to add some water and some of this powdered gravy. And that makes for like two, three meals worth of gravy, at least for me. And then right here is my sauerkraut. And for anybody who doesn't know what this is, it's basically just fermented cabbage. That's that's about it. I think for most people, it's it's a really acquired taste. It's, it's a little bit weird, but it's really good. I at like least it. I think so. So I am just going to set an alarm for this. Kraut. And if this is ready, I'm going to make the meat or cook it because that won't be needing that long. Also, I am still picking up the pieces after the binge. This is actually not too bad. It has been like a huge, huge mess before. But tomorrow is another day. And I am like, yeah, I'm a little bit at my limit so this will have to wait to tomorrow or maybe the day after or whatever we'll see um, but this is how my kitchen looks like also when i went over to my sister she got me some bananas which i really like for my breakfast shake and she also gave me some green olives so i think i'm going to snack on these later tonight but we'll see i do like olives not too often though also my meal prep thingies that i will be using later this week actually for the first time the butter is melting and i am just heating up a pan for my meat some oil this will be for like four portions and then for meat i'm just cleaning out my freeze oh she's got burger washed so that used to be my favorite. My favorite meal as a kid used to be that sausage, a burro washed, with uh, spinach and potatoes mashed together, uh, and then with gravy on top. Oh, it's so good. Stumpot. Is it stumpot? I don't know if it's stumpot. I can't remember, but like that was like one of my favorite dishes as a kid. <laughs> so high in fat though, but so delicious. Burro washed, mm. Maybe even five, we'll see. I'm just emptying out my freezer. I have a lot of different kinds of meat and I just want to go through them because some of them have been laying there and I just want to get rid of them before being able to buy new ones. The butter has browned. I'm going to add my water. One spoonful, two spoonfuls, and that's it. I just have to stir it and wait for it to thicken up. The sauerkraut, my potatoes, going to mash that up. I'm going to add in some salt, some pepper, and a little bit of ground nutmeg. Pretty plain because I do really- The nutmeg is really normal in Dutch cooking. You stick nutmeg on many things, but especially with potato dishes. Yeah, it's really nice. But you don't want to have too much though. You can actually die of nutmeg poisoning, did you know that? Fun fact for you, but you can. But obviously, whatever small amount you put through your food or seasoning, you don't die from it of sauerkraut and then also like I will have some meat and gravy with it. That's really flavorful too. So I am plating my food and I learned to just like make a little dent yes, yes. like this. This is what my gravy ended up looking like. I'm going- This is the way. 
It's so nostalgic, it reminds me of being a kid eating this sort of food. I'm going to let this cool and I am going to save that for later. Oh my god, it's one big mess. I'm going to cut up my sausage. I think I'm going for one fourth because I don't want to be stuck with this meat too long. And also, it's in my allowance for today in terms of calories, so that's good. Or at least that's my rough estimation because I did not count every single calorie today. So we have- This sausage is not going to be very high in protein though. This meal is going to be actually quite low in protein. I won't be surprised if there's not more than 15 grams of protein in all of this. For meat to go with it. And that's it for my dinner. Oh, mm, it doesn't look pretty. Come on, that's better. I am going to store the rest of my meat in my gravy and then I can just wash my pan really quick because my cats cannot be on here, but sometimes they do. I don't want them to just lick this. So I'm just going to pour it down there. Give it a really quick rinse and place it upside down. Little bits of cleaning or not really cleaning, more like tidying up. And that's it for dinner. It's an even bigger mess, but that's okay. Let's grab a plate. I'm going... We are 17.3, you see, there's uh, not much in there kitchen foil and that's my dinner for tomorrow. So that's really convenient. Yeah, so I don't have to cook for myself tomorrow. Before placing this in the fridge though, I am going to let it cool first. So I am just going to put it over there and I will place that in my fridge later. So this is my dinner. Bon appetit. Eat smaklik. So I thought this would be funny to show. I have been working on editing the rest of like, or well not the rest, like just all night after eating. And I thought, yeah, it's, it's funny to just show you a little bit of editing inception. So I have been editing everything that I have been doing today. So yeah, the video that you're watching right now. However, this clip that I'm recording right now and the clip after that, I'm going to edit that later because it's already pretty late and I have not spent a lot of time on myself and I sometimes forget doing that and that's very very important but yeah it's funny to show you guys I don't know what editing software she's using I use uh, Filmora that's the editing software I use because it's super easy it's super user friendly to, uh, to to navigate. navigate the editing inception also I have placed a few clips like on top these are also just raw clips that I still have to edit but all this stuff like all the tiny little clips is stuff that I have edited this is about like five minutes of material and all these little clips are just thrown together and this is what it looks like and then sometimes there's an extra little text or a little sound thingy that I want to incorporate so that's what that looks like hey Lamfem so I wanted to just say hello um it's it's pretty late so I'm going to bed I just wanted to thank you for watching my video also it was a very interesting day I counted the amount of proteins that I ate I have it right here so in total for today I ate 87.4 grams That's so little Wow, I would put her, I would suggest that she aims for at least 150 grams a day at her size At least she could probably eat 200 grams a day But she had a lot of carbs there, so her carb intake is going to be a lot more But yeah, 80, 87 grams is quite low I would say 150 minimum Proteins. And I did look online like what's healthy, like what's a healthy amount of proteins to eat. I found online that you should eat like at least one gram for every kilogram that you weigh. And since I weigh about like 180 kilos, that means that I should have like 180 grams of proteins. That sounds very not reachable, I guess. But like, it literally, she just needs to really prioritize her protein and cut back on the carbohydrates and eat more. If she has like three meals a day and just has lean proteins with all of that. And not worry, because she's counting, obviously there is protein in like your bread and like sauerkraut, but that's not really the protein that matters. She kind of, she kind of wants to just really focus on proteins from dairy and from animal products, like animal product proteins. Basically, that's the only way to really get your proteins up. Because these little proteins here and there that you get in plant-based products or yeah, plant-based products or vegetarian products, vegan products, it's not... It's not gonna give you the same bang for the buck, but yeah, I would say 150 minimum as well. Minimum. I don't. 80 grams of protein. I don't even. I don't. I don't even think I could go through a day of eating so little protein. That's crazy to me. He said, I am not going to change anything on my diet yet. I am just doing this to get some or to gain some insights. And it's it has been very interesting so far. I'm definitely going to keep doing this. I already noticed that I'm educating myself by doing this. Also, it makes it really, really hard to calculate the exact amount of calories because I have calculated some calories here and there, but I haven't like added it all up together in the end. So that's it's, it's interesting. It's really helping me so far. So I'm just going to continue doing this and educating myself more doing this. And that's about it. I just wanted to thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a great day wherever you are. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye, Lamfam. So... Tips I would give her is that she likes her morning shakes. In the morning shakes, have some liquid egg whites that you can buy pasteurized from the shop. Have some protein powder, but like actual protein powder, not uh, like some whey protein, something like that. Um, she could also add some uh, the, some more of the high protein yogurt with her lunch. Instead of having just the cheese, she could put in some deli slices of chicken breast in there. She could have had a snack of some boiled eggs, for example. Uh, she could have maybe had a snack of a protein bar to get up a bit more protein. Uh, in the evening dinner, the sausage is really high in fat. I'm not necessarily saying that fat is bad, but for that whole meal, the amount of protein was too small. So 
maybe if, if she does something like that, just have some like chicken breast on the side and cut back on the carbs because her carb portions are just too great still. That's the recommendation I would say is like for her, to, if she wants to stay within a certain calorie limit, she really has to cut back on those uh, carbohydrates and uh, yeah, just up the protein and just make more of an effort. Uh, maybe have like a tin of tuna throughout the day with like, I don't know, mixed up if she was having olives. Maybe some tuna with some olives and some gherkins. Just has a little side salad thing. It's it just, it's quite, quite it's quite easy to eat a lot of protein. You just have to do it, uh, which obviously sounds straightforward. But you just have to, as in like, if you if she was to eat more plant products, uh, if she was to eat more animal products and cut back on her carbohydrates, she would definitely reach that because she was probably eating. I'm going to say around 2,000 calories because a lot of that food is quite high in calories. So. But not not saying that 2,000 calories is too much for her. She can eat more than that. I'm just saying that if she cut back on her carbs, she would have more space for for uh, proteins, basically. So anyway, I'm really happy that she's making this change. It makes me super excited to see. Uh, I'm curious to see how it's going to impact her long term. If she's going to be able to up her protein intake a bit more. Because I get what she's trying to do by just getting an understanding of what has protein in it and how much. It's a good starting point. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, in a few weeks' time how she's responding to it and if she's able to push the protein more and if she is then that way if she feels like she is more satiated and just like how it impacts her uh, her overall well-being basically so i'm gonna go thanks a lot for watching and insert a chicken and egg emoji comment like subscribe dislike the video if you disliked it let me know down below why go and check out my vlog channel be sure you subscribe there as well and i will see you in the next video bye guys